Last video was a big, long rundown of the various editing problems that plague Warner Brothers film Suicide Squad, and the comments got... Well, there, there's a lot of them. First thing, a correction. Fox is the studio responsible for Fanforstic, not Sony. This was purely an error on my part. I, I got a brain cloud, though in my defense, I ran the script by a number of people, and none of them caught it either, because it's just that believable that Sony would also produce something like Fanforstic. To be clear, Fox holds the film rights for Fantastic Four, X-Men, and Deadpool, while Sony holds the rights to Spider-Man, which, you know, hasn't exactly been stellar these days either. Second, the fate of Griggs. In the video, I highlight that the chief security guard, Griggs, is overdeveloped in the front half of the movie, but disappears after this interaction with Harley as the squad are being loaded onto a plane for Midway City. A lot of people popped into the comments to mention that Griggs is seen again being tortured by Joker. And this is, to me, actually a great illustration of how bad the overall structure of the movie is, that so many people would, in retrospect, be unable to accurately place the scene order. So the scene that people are referring to is this one, where Joker threatens Griggs and it cuts away before we find out what Joker wants or plans. But this scene actually comes much earlier. In fact, it's way back before Enchantress even breaks her brother out. In that scene, Griggs presumably gets the cell phone that he later gives to Harley, and then after that, he's never seen again. Now, a few people suggested that he's in the helicopter when Harley escapes, working the minigun, but that's just another one of Joker's henchmen. So, Griggs is seen interacting with the inmates during all of their repetitive introductions, then he goes to the casino where he's intercepted by Joker's gang, and finally, he gives the cell to Harley, and then he's never seen again. Third, another small correction. Trailer Park is the company that Warner Brothers reportedly got to do an alternate competing cut of the movie. However, their prior involvement was actually the 2015 Comic-Con sneak preview and not the Bohemian Rhapsody trailer like I said in the video. That trailer, the theatrical trailer, and all the TV spots were cut by another company, Aspect. So the confusion is that Trailer Park was brought in to make a full cut more along the lines of the trailers that were cut by Aspect. Fourth, the bottle was cough syrup, and it was full of water. Or was it? It was water. Lastly, a note on the difference between structural editing problems and script problems. How do you tell if something is poorly edited or if it was forced that way by poor writing? This is a legitimately difficult thing to reverse engineer out of a finished film unless you have access to the shooting script. So for the purpose of analysis, it's an editing problem if the material exists but is in the wrong order, and it's a scripting problem if the material doesn't exist at all. So, for example, the Flash cameo sequence in Batman v Superman is ultimately pointless and confusing, focusing on oblique franchise building rather than any sort of character or plot development relative to the actual movie. So, while that's a script problem because they wrote it that way, it's more pertinently an editing problem because the editor should have dropped it. These are interlocking problems, though. Suicide Squad's poor pace is a direct consequence of poor writing. Because all the characters were written in their compartmentalized bits, it's really hard for the editors to make that move at a good pace. To reiterate from the longer breakdown, a more coherent cut of the film almost certainly exists, but it would be an incredibly long, slow-moving cut of the film as well, with even more time dedicated to backstories and time in prison, something that already takes up almost half of the runtime. And that's it for this week. Please like, share, and subscribe, and if you'd like to call me a beta SJW cuck Marvel fanboy, you're probably already typing that into the comments, let's be honest.